thing, like I said, we're going to talk about imagination and singing. So what, when I'm saying, when I'm talking about singing, I'm talking about very important thing that usually nobody knows. That when we play, we create music by being between notes. So it's my be illusion that okay, we play one note, and this, and this, and this, and this, and one note is louder, one note is softer. That's all we can do, which is uh, just actually an illusion. This is an illusion <laughs> because uh, the way we connect notes, what we feel between notes while playing, directly affects how we actually can control and predict and influence our uh, interpretation and again our technique as well. Uh, so let me give you an example. Uh, if we're gonna sing, for example, two notes, again we're gonna apply the rules of uh, oh, say, oh, the movement, of the sound movement. So these two notes I'm gonna sing to the right. Maybe someone wants to sing here. And, oh, it's okay, you know, <laughs> if you don't feel comfortable. So who wants to? Hope, okay. Uh, thank you so much for the imagination part. Now, for another part, who wants to try singing technique? Singing and then how it influences your playing. Maybe two now. Okay. I'm coming. Don't you Well, yeah, you can oh, stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. <laughs> okay, so. Go I stand. No, you're singing, please. I know we're gonna sing, but it's not yet the, the vocal lesson, so please. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you please try to sing again if you any note that is comfortable for you? And both of them you sing, and just try to have this intention to sing to the right. Beautiful. Go. Play and sing. And sing. No, you just sing first. Okay, you just try. Good job. Let's do one more time. Good, good, good. No, no, I mean, if it helps you, sometimes it helps just, you know, to move. You know, you can move your head, you can move your eyes, you can move your hands, you can imagine bow, whatever works for you, just to make your, yeah, to make it easier for you to feel. So you really don't have to, but yeah, if it helps. Okay. So try again. Good job. Good. So now, uh, all right. Now, how can we feel distance between notes? Because right now she's singing just two notes, right? There is no distance between them. Just oh, two sounds. Now, to feel this distance, we have to uh, pass pass it, pass it with glissando. So glissando is like again, you know, like on violin sometimes. So if I was singing with glissando, it would look this way. Right, so you gradually go through, it's like the rainbow changes its colors very gradually. So you may try one more time. Make sure that the second note not, not goes to the moon, still to the right. Yeah, okay, it's three not moon, okay. <laughs> Good. So now, now we can have distance, right? So now we have distance. Now how we can actually feel this distance? All right, so this is a little secret. To feel anything, we have to do this with a little bit of resistance. Okay, for example, when time, when you are on the beach, right, you're not doing anything, the, the time just flies, you know. Now, when you're teaching, <laughs> you just like, oh my god, only 20 minutes, all right. So, you have to do with a little bit of resistance everything to feel it better. So, the same thing, you try to sing with glissande, but just imagine that something, you know, it comes to you and just, you know, like, you go through resistance. So, it would sound this way. Uh,
Okay, better resistance. You know what we can do? Let's pretend that this is your voice, okay? Uh, all right. Now I'm going to actually create this resistance. Yeah, so you just go through this. Uh, all right, that's much better. One more time. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. All right, good. feel the distance between nodes. Now, why we should feel it and how it can benefit us, why we should actually do this. So by the way, this is exactly how you should sing internally when you play anything. So when I would even play two notes, I wouldn't just, you know, move my fingers. What I would do, I would, and internally, reach second note. And when I reach it internally with my voice, only then I would press the key. In this case, I would feel the distance between notes. Mm -hmm. So why, again, why we, sh why, why we need this? There is a thing that when we play, we are uh, not playing actually with fingers over here because fingers don't have any muscles here. So all those like exercises that uh, like, uh, Pianists in the past tried to invent to develop these muscles. It's just really funny because mm -hmm. there's nothing there. Or when we play, we play with the muscles that are in the palm of our hand. So what we need to do, we need to somehow develop the muscles that control our fingers when we play. So that in this case, we could have control over how we touch the key. Okay, okay, because all right, we have this sensation of sound, okay, good. But now we have to control the speed of how we play faster or slower we're going to the key. And the muscles in the hand, this is exactly how we can achieve this. And the thing is that when we feel this resistance while singing, somehow it affects the muscles in the hands. So again, coming back to this simple interval, when I play and I feel this resistance, the, this feeling comes over here, so my fingers start pre-feeling. So if I do, my finger already, yeah, he already feels how to play. So this is how we achieve the control. Not the other way around, when we you know, press the key, when we hit the key, oh, this is too loud. When they hit the key, oh, this is no sound, okay? <laughs> so, so in this case, uh, you reach it with your voice internally, then you touch the key. Uh, second one, then you touch the key. And the thing is that, well, we have different distance. We have small distance. Then we have huge distance. So, uh, it's all right, but how about... Uh, huge distance so that exactly how we achieve expressiveness in music because if music would consist only uh, it, 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 it would made it would be made only out of uh, thirds like every melody thirds 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 every way third it's boring there is no expressiveness there is no dynamics but because music consists of different intervals seconds octaves like diminished chords so that's why if we simply play them with the same attitude, we can, our playing would be like a machine play, you know. People sometimes, oh, she plays like a machine, you know. There is no music attitude. No, it's because she was never taught how to express herself, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, I'm gonna play next tune, right? And I'm just gonna play next tune with, you know, just good attitude. Okay, I'm just like, yeah, I got the feeling, okay. So, and then I'm not gonna use any imagination or intonation, so I will just play. You know, my body would try to express, but the sound, the music wouldn't change. Just, just blowing in the sky, and this 
just on cellos. Nice, like violas or maybe like violins. So now I have like the whole picture in my mind. Alright, that's already very inspiring. Now I imagine there was beautiful movements. I know the movements of every note. Moreover, I imagine them with the ensemble when one note gradually goes into another one, and I'm gonna sing at the same time eternally. So basically, I will sing. Because when I sing out loud, it's just ugly. <laughs> it's like. But uh, when you sing it internally, it's much more beautiful. So, <laughs> so if I would play it with clear sound imagination, with um, intonation, that would sound absolutely differently. musical foundation, which means they didn't listen music much, and when I'm saying listen music, I'm saying about orchestra music, I'm saying about how violin song, how cellos, like for, for them, the first like problem is to actually imagine the sound. So what I would always do, I would always let them listen music from the very beginning, because later on you will need this, <laughs> from the very beginning. If students, for example, didn't sing, the same way. And we know, for example, my students singing, oh my goodness, <laughs> this is like no way. <laughs> so, and this is actually the problem from what I know in Singapore, because everyone thinks about, okay, we're going to exercise fingers, you play more hand on, you play more scales, okay, you play more, you, you prepare for every SM exam, good, if you pass, <laughs> great, if you've got distinction, okay, you're a master of playing, all right. So, but nobody ever thinks about Okay, you, you sing in the, in the, okay, you have to sing because of oral test. If no oral test, nobody will teach singing at all, right? Mm -hmm. So, but the thing is that it all starts with imagination, with listening to music, it all starts with singing. And every lesson should really include this from the very beginning, because if after five years, student never done this properly, then this is a problem. And actually, I can say that the students, even of my students who can sing well naturally, they actually play much better. They kind of more musical, you can you can say, oh, this is like a really talented, you know. But because he can sing better. And the student who cannot sing even like cannot get into the pitch, it's always he would even play like like this. I'm just saying that our imagination and our singing ability directly influence our piano technique. So piano is not about playing Piano. piano is just expressing what we have in our mind. If there is nothing here, then you cannot really... I mean, you can probably impose, you can say, okay, please is softer, and this more gentle, and this, come on, be brave, faster, faster, faster. But that should basically come from the student within. Otherwise, they will just imitate your ideas, and we all know that the worst thing you can do is not being creator, but imitate someone's idea. But when you teach student, when you give him all the tools, okay, look at the score, look, okay, for next time, tell me, how we could arrange this music, you know, be like a composer, like this one, would be what, violin, or beautiful voice, okay, which voice, okay, give him different, like, uh, variants, okay, do you like this voice, or oh, I like this voice more, why do you like this voice more, so, okay, let's imagine this kind of voice, so, 
This is what brings really, uh, mm, again, motivation <laughs> to students to practice because they feel inspired, they feel it's interesting, they feel playing piano is not about moving fingers to the right key. Unfortunately, I should say that uh, this attitude of teaching uh, is not only in Singapore, <laughs> it's everywhere so far. We are very ancient here. So um, I'm just trying to educate everyone right now. <laughs> With this, because, like I said again, um, I watched that Arthur Rubinstein uh, interview uh, a few days ago. He exactly he's talking about. He was asking, okay, how how did you find this beautiful sound? How could you reach this beautiful sound while playing? Well, he said, I listen to this singer. I listen to that singer, and I learn from them how they sing, how they made the phrasing. So what he's basically saying, and then he would sing something, and he would sing with the sound, he was like, oh, oh, oh. he wouldn't sing, oh, oh, oh. he would sing, oh, oh. and uh, actually you can also notice when students, uh, when pianists play, some of them, they're moving their mouth, like, <laughs> that looks terrible, <laughs> unless you know that this is exactly the way they sing, because when you intonate, and when you internet very expressive, uh, sometimes even, for example, Dan Gould, uh, he would just, <laughs> he would just go beyond opening mouth. He would just like sometimes express the sound right away. Uh, so the same technique can be taught. Uh, the, the thing is that it cannot be taught to people who wants to acquire this right away without having any musical decent background. So listening to music and singing should go like 80% of the lesson and then 20% of playing. Uh, but again, again, the priority is always on the attitude of the student himself. And that goes to the attitude in the family. <laughs> because if the attitude in the family that you are a loser and you mm. go there and you do this because you're told, there is no inch in initiation from the student, right? He will be just like, okay, I will imagine, okay, I will sing. But if the family, the environment is good and actually the student have this interest to music, that, that also is very important. So knowledge and teaching is one thing, but also environment and the student's general musical ability is also very important. So it's all together. But basically, what I'm teaching here is mostly for college level students who already um, consciously choose to to be piano their profession, to be piano their passion. This is what they love to do, this is what they want to do.